Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm very excited to show you this game from the War of the Ring 2023 World Tournament. If you've been following along, I am in the round of 32, 32 players remain, and the last game that I played against Julianus had such a significant rule error that we decided to, the judges decided that we should replay it. So I'll just for purposes of uh, completeness I want to show. This was, so we played this game back in April, the, the game two, that I won because of the rules mistake, or at least in part because of the rules mistake. And normally when we find problems with a game and it's much later, we wouldn't replay it. But because the tournament had not progressed and because I'm the head tournament organizer and judge, we decided, the judges decided that, that really we should replay it. So this was, this was their ruling. I'll just um, sort of acknowledge that because of the schedule, this was over the summer and I was moving and et cetera, um, we requested that the judges allow us to do a coin flip. And Julianus was also in favor of that because they felt like they had better than a 50, uh, that I had better than a 50-50 chance of winning against them. So they were happy with a coin flip. So... Uh, we did a coin flip. The judges agreed to that. You can see Julianus confirmed. And then uh, Summer McLovin, who is the the head judge, said, okay, great. And normally we would never use a coin flip to determine the outcome of a game. But because we did actually play a whole game too, and there was extenuating circumstances, we decided that would be appropriate. So here is the result of the replay of the game. You can see Peter made a comment, and then here we go. All right, doing the coin flip, drum roll please. I'm number one, Julianus is number two, who wins the game? It's Julianus. <laughs> so, right, so I ended up losing a tournament game, which, as you remember, if you remember the last video, like if I hadn't had Orc Patrol, there was a good chance Julianus would have won that. So I, I feel totally fine with this outcome. I think it's actually completely fair. And uh, now we get to play game three. So so that was the result of the replayed game. And now we go on to game three. So here's here's the actual re uh, game three. We are one and one now. And when you're one and one, because now it's uh, so there must be... Um, a winner of the match, we and we know that in the base game, Shadow is favored slightly, we allow players to bid. So we ended up bidding, I don't actually remember exactly what the bid was. Let's see. So they they had a higher seed than me, so they got to bid. They bid one token to play free uh, to play shadow, and I accepted. So I'm I'm playing free people with one token. Usually I think two tokens is actually more fair, but uh, I think I was just in the mood to play free people. So so I just accepted it, even though I thought it was a little a little low. So, all right, so let's jump in and see what happens. They allocate zero eyes and roll none. And I think this is, you know, I've practiced free people military a lot. And, and so people, I think, are a little more inclined to allocate zero eyes against me round one because they're worried that they're going to roll a bunch of eyes and then I get some military attack going. And, and this is the benefit of your opponent knowing that you can play a military game as free people because they're going to allocate zero eyes and then sometimes they're not going to roll any eyes and you're going to get a roll like this. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I get four free movement or th at least three free movement from the fellowship. I don't have to play a military game. It's just an option. So... You know, they got a decent number of attacks, but only one muster, which will happen even if you allocate zero eyes. So, you know, getting six attacks is is still above average. So, all right, so let's see how we proceed. And they move armies to from Far Harad to Near Harad, Baradur to Gorgroth, pretty unsurprising moves there. And then I pass. They draw a strategy card. Nice to get many kings early. That allows you to muster in North Rune and South Rune, giving you a 10 stack, plus two more in Near Harad, getting a 10 stack there. So you can go straight into West Toronto and Polar Gear with a full stack if you want. So not bad. They're moving armies Gorgoroth to Morinon and Dol Gulder to 
South Anduin Vale. So this is a fairly standard opening strategy where they're going to go, most likely they're going to go to the to do Dale, Erebor, and Woodland Realm up north with this Mordor army from Mornon. They'll combine these armies to attack Lorien, the Dol Guldur and Moria armies to attack Lorien, and then because they know they have many kings, they can also then follow up with an attack on Erebor with these South Ron and Easterling units. So, all right. They will need to get some more musters to get their factions to war, but Hopefully that will happen for them. All right, so I just start moving the fellowship. Yes, theoretically, I could get Aragorn turn one if I wanted to give them a ring, but I'm happy to get three free movement. All right, so I keep moving the fellowship. They mustered Isengard. Uh, I move the fellowship again. They move their armies along. And now I could have given them a ring to move a fourth time, but that would let them get Saruman turn one. So instead, I use my token so that they have to take the last action of the round. And then if I want to use a ring to move the fellowship for another movement, they won't be able to get Saruman. All right, so they, I, I did muster the elves to war using the token, and now I use a ring to move the fellowship four times. So I got four movements completely safe round one. I did give them a ring for that, but obviously that's pretty significant. All right, so I drew wizard staff. That's very interesting. Um, I wonder if I'm tempted at all to declare past Moria so that I can potentially get Aragorn more quickly. I don't have anything that separates Aragorn from the Fellowship, so I'll probably just try and kill off Gandalf and not play Wizard Staff, I'm guessing, but but we'll see we'll see what I roll. If I get they they don't have Saruman. So even if I kill Gandalf this round, there's a chance I wouldn't be able to get him. Alright, so they got three musters and they have a ring. So they probably won't be able to get one of my factions to war. Holy cow, I got a lot of movement. Okay, so yeah, I've rolled seven movement on eight dice. That's pretty significant. So, all right, so they muster Southron, or they muster Sauron to war, and then I just start moving the fellowship. They miss, they get their armies in position to attack Lorien and North Rovanian. I move again, they miss again, they get their armies in position around Lorien and Woodland Realm. So I go ahead and right. So right, so what were my choices here? One choice was to get Aragorn right now. Another choice is to just keep moving the fellowship. And the thing is, if I kill off Gandalf, I don't actually get an extra die this round because they're going to use their last die to get Saruman. So, you know, it's not bad to keep moving the Fellowship, but this is a moment where I can get Strider right now. And it seems like maybe the the risks, I mean, I'm making s progress so quickly. I don't know. Turn two Aragorn seems pretty good to me. And be, because the Fellowship has not taken much corruption, really any corruption, literally no tiles drawn, uh, I can uh, separate some companions, shore up my military while still leaving the Fellowship completely healthy. And I do have wizard staff. So, yeah, so I guess because I have six movement, I can send Aragorn Strider straight to Dol Amroth and then I can crown him there. That's it's nine movement, six plus his level three. All right, so will I bring Boromir? Um, I'm pretty sure Boromir comes. All right, so Boromir comes along, and now even if they get Corsairs, I'm you know first of all it's going to be much easier for me to get Gondor to war in advance of Corsairs because of Boromir's ability, and I have companions in there. It's likely to be survivable against Corsairs, assuming I get even a little mustering. All right, so I get Aragorn, turn two. They play many kings. That's an efficient use of their Palantir die, and we move on. Maybe maybe it would have been better to just keep moving. Move, 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 and kill off Gandalf turn two, and then hopefully get Gandalf turn three. I'm only rolling four dice. Now I'm rolling five dice. I've lost Strider's ability, but I have Wizard Staff, 
So, all right, I'm very happy to top deck Celeborns. That's good. There are a lot of cards that could be useful there. I'm happy to see Imrahil of Dol Amroth, Cairdan Ships, Celeborns, Thranduil, Power Too Great. Like, there are a lot of cards, um, strategy cards that can be useful there. So, yes, Celeborns a good top deck, but there are a lot of good possible top decks there. All right, they roll not that many musters, but at least one. So if they put the elves to war, which they can, then they can at least get the Witch King turn three. And I only get one movement. So maybe this is an argument to have pushed, pushed, pushed last round, but I also didn't get a Will of the West. So, you know, having a little bit stronger military options, if I don't have uses for these Palantirs, I can potentially, I don't know, uh, I can use Bormir's ability. But overall, like I still have Gandalf as the guide, so those Palantirs aren't that bad. All right, let's see what happens. I start by playing Aomer because I want to cycle even more into Thranduils or um, Power to Great, maybe. So that's interesting. I guess I didn't want to play Celeborns right here because... I, I would draw too many cards. I also have Wizard Staff to play. So with with a fifth die from Strider, from Aragorn, I'm less urgent to kill off Gandalf, particularly because I didn't roll a Will of the West. If I had rolled a Will of the West, I might not have played Wizard Staff. But all right. So I play Aomer. I get Grimbjorn. Not super useful. They attack into Lorien. I play Wizard Staff, knowing that they're going to attack. They're going to attack Woodland Realm before they attack into Lorien. So I still have a moment to play Celeborns. Though, though maybe it would have been wiser to play Celeborns in case I then cycled into Thranduils with that. Then I could play both Celeborns and Thranduils. All right. So Horn of Gondor, not useful. And now that I have kind of a useless card, I'm probably fine to play Celeborns. They attack Woodland Realm. Now I play Celeborn. I draw into Imrahil of Dol Amroth and Kindred of Glorfindel. So I got three extra card draws by keeping Gandalf in the Fellowship. You know, is that worth it? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I get rid of Mighty Attack. All right. They muster the Witch King. That obviously makes sense. I did not draw into Thranduils. All right, fine. They play Black Captain Commands and then attack into Woodland Realm. They only get one hit. I get two back. They play Orc Patrol. So this is a situation where Wizard Staff plus six free movement means they're just giving up on the Fellowship, really. So, all right. Um, I get one hit. Those elves are very good. Thranduil's elves worked hard. And <laughs> respect to Thranduil, yeah, totally. So what did, what just happened? They drew a strategy card. I move, and they hit me. That's funny. They hit me on a single six. All right, fine. I get rid of Wizard Staff, and uh, they get no hits against Woodland Realm. And, <laughs> and uh, yep, a little unlikely there. They could have played, uh, could they have played a card? I guess they didn't want to play any of these. They have three copies of Devil Rhea of Orthanc, yeah. And that's the benefit of bringing this regular from North Dunlin to Lorien. And maybe they should have started in Lorien, I don't know. Um, it's it's hard to say. They could have brought the Witch King into Lorien and then played, and then played um, Black Captain Commands there. So, all right. Um, they play Dreadful Spells to try and... Oh, they played Dreadful Spells on Dale. That's a nice play. That's a very nice play. So then you can just walk in and there's no retreating. There's no scouts. But they miss. They didn't get a five. So they have had really bad, really bad combat rules for sure. And I get two movement here. Let's see what happens. I could make it to Mordor this round if I use a ring. I may also be happy to spend my musters and go a little slower. So they are trying to take out Woodland Realm. That, that, yeah, that guy has never missed. 
Yeah, I have literally never missed any combat roll or any attack possibility in Woodland Realm. That's that's pretty crazy. So Yeah, so those three hit points in Woodland Realm managed to decimate this army from from Mordor. Definitely unlucky for Shadow there. Super unlucky. They might, that said, they might still be able to take out Erebor with these uh, 10, 10 units in South Rune and North Rune. All right. So I move the Fellowship to see what happens. They get another six, and now they re now I've re the Fellowship has been revealed. So a little bit of a bummer for me. I'm not going to make it to Mordor this round. And I get an extra tile, and Gandalf takes... So I keep Gandalf as the guide because I see that I'm not going to be able to... I don't have a Will of the West. I'm not going to be able to um, bring him back this round. And given that I don't have Strider as guide, it doesn't really make a difference to rush Gandalf, I don't think. So they muster the Southrons and Easterlings toward war. I get a little worried about Corsairs. And they play hill trolls in Lorien. They move their armies to meet up in East Rune, move the Witch King, and get armies prepared to attack Lorien, as well as give uh, a, a uh, Nazgul on the Fellowship and a Nazgul in East Rune. That's a nice play for them. I start mustering the dwarves. I guess I see that they only have a single attack right now. So if they move their army from Eastern into Iron Hills, I can must that will put the dwarves one away from war. Then I can use another muster to get the dwarves all the way to war before they can attack, assuming they don't have ringwraiths or abroad. So they're going to probably avoid Iron Hills, go after Dale, but I have scouts in hand. So uh, there's a chance that that unit from Dale is going to get into Erebor. So that's, I think that's my thinking with that muster. I definitely also am a little worried about getting Gondor to war. Uh, I do have Grey... Oh, right. Never mind. I have Grey Company and I have Emory Hill of Dole Amroth. So I'm not too worried about Corsairs uh, because I have these uh, cards that can help me in the siege. All right. They get... Oh, right. And the Southrons and Easterlings uh, weren't even at war all the way. All right, so I get the dwarves one away from war. They draw a strategy card. I get the dwarves all the way to war. Okay, so my thinking is because I have Imrahil and because I have Grey Company, I'm just not that worried about Dol Amroth. I will instead shore up the defenses of Erebor and then good luck to them finding a good target. All right. So... We see that Shadow is giving up on uh, Corsairs, at least temporarily. They move from near Harad to West Harondor. And now that the dwarves are at war, they go ahead and um, move into Iron Hills. Oh, I, I missed the fact that they had a ring. So, um, yeah, so I wonder about that. Because the, South the Southrons and Easterlings were not at war yet... I had time to do all of that play using two musters. So this way, um, I used four musters to get a single elite into Erebor, but I don't know. Maybe maybe that's worth it if that if Erebor holds, and then I can draw into Dane Ironfoot Guard later. Then Erebor can really hold. All right, and I just drew House of Stewards. So uh, Dol Amroth is extremely safe. I have Grey Company, Imrahil of Dol Amroth, and House of Stewards. Great. All right. So I get rid of Power of Tom Bombadil and Grey Company. I guess I figure I have enough ability to draw strategy cards with House of Stewards and uh, Imrahil of Dol Amroth, and that will make Dol Amroth really, really buff. All right. So they allocate and I roll one more, and I get plenty of movement. I start, of course, by mustering into Erebor. They attack in Lorien. They get two hits i get three back because of confusion they press interesting i play imrahil of dol amroth oh right gosh and i forgot i had cured and chips wow so whatever i i had a i had literally like 
did I have all of the cards? Yeah, I had all four of the cards that could possibly allow me to muster into Dol Amroth. Okay, okay then. So I'm playing cards pretty freely because I have House of Stewards. So I will be able to refill my hand pretty quickly, and I'm happy to be playing these. All right. Um, they play Deadly Strife. Obviously, that's nice for them. I get four hits. They get four hits, and they have to end their attack. I move the Fellowship along. They hit me and reveal me, so that's obviously bad. They attack Lorien again, and this time they take them out. And I hide the Fellowship. Pilargear gets attacked. They miss, and I retreat into Lasarnach. I'm, I'm fine baiting them into trying to come towards Dol Amroth because I have cared in ships, I have House of Stewards. And this way, this one regular in Lasarnach will be able to retreat into Minas Tirith if they go that way. So it looks like Minas Tirith is the much harder location, but either I'm bluffing pretty boldly or I actually have it. And I think they make the right call and know that I, that I have it. Um, Oh, oh, no. Okay. So they came they came to Lamadon. You know, I think that's right. I, I don't think I don't think that's the wrong call. If you managed first of all, there's a chance that, that I could, you know, be bluffing. Second of all, even if I'm not bluffing and I have Cairden ships, uh, you still might take out Aragorn and that could be significant, right? Like they have cards, they can do it. They have two Muma kill. So and relentless assault. So there are definitely options that they have. All right, they attack into Dol Amroth. I play Cairden Ships. And I still have Gandalf as guide, so I got to redraw that. Wow, that was a Palantir. So now I have Daylight. And they attack into Erebor. I move the Fellowship. And they do not have Cruel Weather. And... But they do play Nautical Strike, so that's nice. They manage to kill off Gandalf there. And the Fellowship has made it into Mordor on turn five. Certainly could have gotten there faster if I wanted to. Maybe that would have been wiser. I think by slowing down, I managed to defend Erebor better. I certainly managed to defend Dol Amroth better, but it's hard to say. It's I think it's pretty hard to say. I have not r rolled a Will of the West since turn two. I don't think so. Yeah, I haven't rolled a Will of the West since turn two. So if I had killed off Gandalf, I would still be at four dice on turn three, on turn four, on turn five. So the 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 return on dice is already paying off. Plus I have military defenses as a result. Okay, I don't know. All right, King Brandsman, very happy to see Mithril Coat and Sting. Uh, yeah. So they allocate one eye, roll zero, and let's see. So I can now bring back Gandalf with that um, Will of the West. I can move the Fellowship. I can muster where I need to muster. So, all right. They are bemoaning a bit of their luck. Uh, or no, I guess I've noted they've literally rolled only a single eye. Um, these these dice are reversed. So, oh, sorry. So you, you can see. I'm just looking at the statistics right now. They've rolled only a single eye so far the entire game, and they're plus nine on attack dice. So they can get their armies wherever they want, but they're minus five, uh, minus five on sixes. So that's certainly made their stronghold attacks pretty rough. Okay. Uh, so I start by moving the fellowship. All right, so I didn't get Gandalf when I could have. My thinking is I have two rings. I want to destroy the ring um, next round. So spending one guaranteed movement right now for effectively half a movement next round and being myself more vulnerable to something like Day Without Dawn if I roll a bunch of wills uh, is, is not worth it. That was my calculation. Planning on destroying the ring next round. So just move, move, move. They draw an eye. I take one. I just lose. I just lose Legolas because I want to stop getting. I want to make all of these reveals the two, the one, the zero. I want these to be non reveal tiles because I'm just not worried about corruption. I have Bilbo's song. I have. I'm at negative two corruption right now. There are no red tiles in there. I'm just, 
you know, very happy to just be moving along. All right, they play a red tile. Okay. I hide the fellowship. They play a second red tile. All right, so now maybe my calculation is a little different. Uh, the hunt pool is looking not quite as nice. Now two out of 14. Um, give me a red tile. All right, so let's see. I pass now. They attack into Dol Amroth. And I have, I'm prepared with House of Stewards. So I'm happy to play my um, cards, my combat cards, and then refill my hand. They play Muma Kill. Obviously, that is not great for me. They get two hits, and I get only one hit. Oh my gosh. So the expectation of them getting more hits than me on three dice, only hitting on, yeah, only hitting on sixes on the leader reroll quite quite low i think i don't know exactly how low that is but all right so they get three hits i take i only dish out one they're thinking about pressing or not they do press and i'm like oh man if i lose this battle i will be very sad they get to play another strategy card i am i of course am continuing to play every strategy card i can because i really want those guys to survive because i'm holding house of stewards in hand all right they play desperate battle they get no hits this time, pleasant, and I get three hits. All right, so combat balance is out, fair enough. They stop now, and then I very happily play House of Stewards. So <laughs> they mock that my shield wall was useless. I redraw, I have Book of Mazarbul and Through Day and a Night. Those are, you know, somewhat useful combat cards that I can play. Um, and they muster the Mouth of Sauron, that makes sense. And let's see, they are reinforcing in Rohan. They are getting Rohan ready. And then I move the fellowship. I get a three. I'm very happy to see that. I mean, not very happy, but totally happy. Uh, yeah, fine. You know, the only thing that might've been better was a maybe a two or a, yeah, the three is fine. Totally happy because um, now I get to get rid of Gimli and a Hobbit. And now this two and this one are no longer revealing me. And I have Mithril Coat and Sting, which I can now play safely even if they have Worn with Sorrow and Toil. So yeah, that's that's a good draw for me. They attack into Fords of Eisen. Obviously, I'm not happy to uh, let Helm's Deep get besieged without also getting this elite in. But I'm going to use... Uh, this is, you know, I'm going to use... I'm not using a ring for military defense at this point i'm using the ring to run with the fellowship so i move the fellowship again it's another three i'm fine with that i'm not revealed i'm not stopped i'm not worried about corruption so i i can move two more times it's very likely i can move two more times without taking um that much corruption and i have bilbo song and i have mithril coat and sting so um, really, the only concern is, am I going to roll enough movement and Palantirs? All right. So they draw Fighting Rook high. That can help them, you know, get to the to the victory points they need. They have um, Helm's Deep, a decent chance at Helm's Deep. Not great, a decent chance. They have Erebor, some chances, not great. So, and and I think um, Dol Amroth is impossible, right? Like there's no, no realistic way for them to take Dol Amroth with me having two companions in there and the same number of hit points as them. They allocate an eye. They roll three. So now, actually, I'm a little nervous. I get two movement, but, you know, probably okay. I think I'm going to start by playing um, Mithrakot and Sting. Yeah, that's good. And they're planning out their turn. They play Fighting or Akai to try and take Helm's Deep. I think that's a totally reasonable play. They have one ring, but they did not get any character dice, so I'm not sure that it's worth it for them to reposition the Witch King. Um, I'm also a little surprised that they didn't use the Palantir to play Fighting or Akai, given that this is an attack that they could use. Maybe they're planning on three cities through getting three more cities i don't know i i think i would my my best hopes would be getting lucky in erebor and then taking out helms deep 
and then either going to Edoras or going to Dale. I would probably move my Nazgul first. I guess we'll see. All right, they play We Come to Kill. Yeah, that's interesting. They could have also used the Palantir to play We Come to Kill with, or to play Ulog High to reinforce Erebor. So, all right. Um, they get two hits. I get two back. They miss on We Come to Kill. I play Confusion. They get two hits. I get one back. It looks like Helm's Deep is going to fall. Helm's Deep falls. All right, so they played a significant combat card, and they took out Helm's Deep. That's fair. They're at seven points. I now move the Fellowship, and I get a... Wow, they draw a red tile, which honestly is not so crazy given that they had them in from step two. So, all right, that's fair. Now, if I get hit by this, I cannot destroy the ring this round because... Um, that stops me and reveals me, and I only have one more movement, even with a ring. So I redraw and get a zero. That's much better. That's much, much better. Uh, and now the only thing that's going to stop them is if they draw another red tile, and that's the power of Mithril Coat and Sting. So they attack into Dale. Not exactly sure why. All right. And now... They play Shadows Gather. Interesting. They're using Shadows Gather from to take care of Pilar Gear. Now Pilar Gear is defended. Okay. I move to destroy the ring. Sure. All right. And then they do five corruption, but I'm fine. So I guess their plan was... I don't know exactly what their plan was to take out. Oh, I guess they were just planning on taking out, um, taking out Dol Amroth. So they would move Polar Gear to Lamadon, Lamadon to Dol Amroth, and then attack into Dol Amroth. Possible. Still risky though, depending on what combat cards I have, particularly Heroic Death could be a real mess for them. Anyway, that was the game. Um, you know, I think that's the risk of allocating zero eyes round one. And, you know, overall, I was only plus one, plus two on movement total. And, um, yeah, I mean, they, their sixes, they were minus on sixes. They were also like really positive on it on attacks. So I think I think the luck did go my way, but I also think my choice to separate Aragorn to um Dol Amroth on that round that I could have pushed the fellowship really hard, I think was right, because I think there's a real chance they could have won a whole round earlier without Aragorn and Boromir there and maybe maybe not because I did have Cirdans and I would have saved Immerhill of Dol Amroth and not played it as a combat card but the fact that I was able to play so many combat cards because I had the ability to refill my hand both with Gandalf's ability because he was the guide for so long and with uh, House of Stewards yeah it's interesting I, th I don't I actually don't know which is best I'd be curious to know what would you have done? Would you have pushed the fellowship when you had the chance, when you were just like so far ahead already and could have just gotten, you know, seven or eight movement by the end of round two? Um, or would you have separated Aragorn there and slowed down a bit? So uh, good games, Julianus. That was the round of 32. I now advance to the round of 16. And I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thanks for watching.